Hi there, my name is Ruben and welcome to this special update or a special video really. You know, I've been doing this weekly uh, hidden gems videos where I talk about different ideas like strategy and data privacy, uh, but tools is something I get asked about all the time. And today I want to cover a tool that to me has a very interesting place in the analytics world. Uh, Heap Analytics has a very different philosophical view to how data should be captured and stored compared to tools like Mixpanel and Amplitude. And in this video, I really want to help you understand three things. First, what does Heap look like in 2020 today? Uh, Future-wise, company-wise, position-wise, where do they seem to be going? Next, how something like Heap could fit into your company. So who is it a really good fit for? Who is it not? Uh, how does it work with different industries? And then third, I want to help you understand how different tools play a role uh, within a strategy. So how would he play well with other tools in your stack? Data, marketing, sales, and so on. Heap has actually uh, some integrations that are very interesting. Now, this is not a comprehensive look at every little thing Heap offers. Uh, instead, it's a strategic conversation around how to think about a tool like Heap and how to bring it into your company and does it even make sense for your company. So I'm going to share their website, I'm going to share their product, maybe interesting tidbits. Uh, a lot of this is based on my experience uh, and the companies I work for. Uh, I'll try to identify biases that I may have uh, and that may affect my judgment, so you're aware of that as well and try to give you my opinion on where I see this tool and how it's gonna evolve in the marketplace. So I'm gonna share my screen. So let's follow along and look at Heap Analytics in 2020. So let's dive into Heap. Heap to me is a fascinating uh, tool in the space. They are philosophically different uh, from competitors like Mixpanel and Amplitude. And tools like Mixpanel and Amplitude require uh, heavy instrumentation, you really have to think through your data. Uh, Heap, on the other hand, is built on the idea that you'll just collect everything where you just click, page loads, form submits, and then you'll come and organize it. Uh, so this idea of auto capture, uh, which Heap uh, has made popular and they have done really well, uh, their, you know, their technical infrastructure for it is very solid on web and mobile apps uh, is based on the idea, right? And from there, they offer uh, product analytics in the same way that you'll see in other tools. You know, you have the ability to build dashboards, uh, to look at individual users and their user properties, uh, to build trend lines, to build core analysis, to build funnels. A lot of the basic reports will be there. So to me, they are, they are interesting because they, they have done quite well uh, when it comes to uh, this idea. Uh, and they clearly have very strong uh, advocates for this model. Now, the model of auto tracking versus not uh, can sometimes be somewhat controversial, right? It seems a lot of tools on the space are not built on auto capture, uh, but uh, uh, heap is. Now, from my perspective, the auto capture data can really do a lot. You can capture a lot of insights just by capturing clicks and, and form submits and so on. You might miss on some things uh, that you, you might not get if you don't think through the data. And, and thinking through your data plan in, on its own uh, could be helpful to, to ensure you're only, you're only working on tracking the right things and so on. However, uh, it is clear that this thinking through this plan of, of a data is also quite complicated. It's why people like me have a job. Um, so some companies uh, would be better off by actually just simply tracking everything uh, and then cleaning it after and, and doing it after. So it, it's almost like a, a split in, in approaches. And I do think both approaches can work quite well. Uh, you can do a lot with it. At the end, you know, is remember that the goal is insights. And the goal is to take those insights and do something with it. Uh, so how you get there might not matter as much as long as you get there. Uh, so sometimes I'll meet companies that have been struggling to maintain uh, very heavy instrumentations uh, like Mixpanel or Amplitude 
and it might just be much better for them to use something like this, build skills, uh, and then go from there, right? And this doesn't mean the heap is a stepping stone that you know you you graduate to, you know, to mix panel amplitude. I think it's a tool they can grow with. Now, some of the interesting things that they have also done is done a lot of work with integrations, uh, and you can send data to a data warehouse. Uh, but they have also done a lot of integrations uh, with uh, other tools. Uh, let me see if I can find them here real quick. Uh, maybe it's this one, what they call Connect. Do, 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 do. Uh, heap integrations. So they actually integrated with uh, Intercom and Salesforce uh, sources. That's what they call them. And what's interesting about sources is that a lot of them are two-way uh, integrations. So not only uh, can you send data to one place, but you can also bring data in. So you can bring uh, messaging data from Intercom or maybe user attributes from Salesforce and connect them out with behavioral data from your website or apps. You can see that you know there's quite a few very popular options like A-B testing right here, uh, segment, uh, delighted for NPS surveys. Um, so these integrations are really quite helpful. Uh, so you can start to connect your what may seem like a broken ecosystem under one tool. The other thing too about Heap is you can actually, you know, it's sort of fundamentally built around this idea of virtual events, but you can actually track regular events. So you can track an event in the same way that uh, something like mixed panel amplitude would do it through their SDKs. Uh, so you can do both. Uh, so they're not mutually exclusive. Of course, a lot of the, the marketing and philosophy is built around this idea of, of virtual events, and they're very handy. Uh, and there is something cool where you can, you know, you can go back and um, and sort of track a new event uh, without having to worry about the uh, the the retroactive data because it's already there. Uh, so as a whole, I think very solid product. Uh, you can do a lot with it. <laughs> One of the things that it might be missing compared to uh, some of the mixed panels or amplitudes of the world uh, might be a lot of the the uh, the machine learning power uh, reports with mixed panel and amplitude has done a lot of work uh, around. Uh, but this is something that uh, Heap might be able to eventually build on, uh, catch on. You know, they they raised some money. They their last raise was back in 2019, uh, about 55 million dollars. Uh, so they done uh, it done well, you know. They uh, uh, they they have funding, uh, maybe not as much funding as other companies, but uh, they clearly found a market and a model and an approach uh, that's that resonates uh, with a lot of product teams and companies. Now, as a space itself, um, as I mentioned in other videos, I think a lot of these tools are becoming uh, much more similar. So I look at future-wise and you know I can do a lot with something like heap uh, and I can do a lot with something like mixed panel and amplitude um, so it almost becomes a question of maybe speed how fast can you go up and running do you have engineering resources uh, what's the expertise of your team um, what kind of uh, stack do you have uh, so I think that's where a lot of questions are going for you know how quickly can can you get someone up and running with data how well can you fit into the stack and how well can you uh, fit into how the team is built. That is, can you support non-technical folks and can you support technical folks who might want uh, more SQL accents on? And I should think Heap is very well positioned uh, al along these lines, uh, the product, where they are, and where they can go uh, from it. So I, I, I would consider and expect Heap to be a very strong player in the years to come. Uh, we'll see if they go more towards that machine learning uh, route uh, the mix panel has has been trying to do. Uh, but even if they don't, there's a lot of value in being able to get product analytics uh, up and running quickly uh, and building a lot of their work around insights, right? Um, and helping teams get those insights. Lastly, uh, helping you understand the role of Heap in an uh, overall data strategy. You know, uh, whenever companies ask me about tools, I always like to bring them back into this. We first want to start by understanding people, 
So who's going to be using the data? What's their skill set? What do they expect from the data, right? You know, for a lot of company, a lot of people, they're, they find it really hard to accept that if they want to track a new future, they're going to have to add the tracking now, which might take a couple of weeks or a few weeks, and they're not going to have any data until that tracking is live, and they're not going to have any historical data. That seems like a crazy idea. But that's what happens a lot of times, right? The data just literally doesn't exist in some cases. Then we have process, and we want to understand how are people are going to be using the data, how do they process it, how do they find insights, do they know the right questions to ask. And finally, we have providers, and this is where Heap falls in. So now, once we figure out people and process, we can then say, what's the right tool for our team? Uh, how do we get the answers we need over the next 6, 12, and 18 months? Uh, and what kind of stack do we already have and we want to add to it? And if you go from a bottom-up approach, you can typically end up with something that's pretty good. If you go from a top-to-bottom approach, you'll try to fit a tool into something that doesn't make sense. And I think a lot of companies that get stuck with tools that are very hard to use or hard to maintain uh, might be starting from a, a, a top to bottom approach. Uh, and by the time they get to people, <laughs> and by the time they they give the tool to, to people, it's completely out of whack. It just doesn't make sense. And that's it for Heap. Um, I love this tool. You know, I, I don't do as much work with it, but I always find it fascinating and how well it has done in, in the marketplace. Um, so it clearly functions and solves a very real need. Uh, and I'm excited to see how the tool evolves and what kind of position it's going to take in uh, a marketplace that seems to be leaning and really loving the addition of machine learning uh, and the power of machine learning. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to hear and do my best to answer them. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, my name is Ruben. Talk soon.